free hacks for Squarespace 7.1. That's what we're talking about today. I'm going to share my favorites learned both working on my own website as well as working on several created this year for my clients on 7.1. On this channel, I talk a lot about personal branding, Squarespace, social media, email marketing, and all kinds of practical advice to look good online. If these are topics that interest you, I'd love to have you around here a little more often. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell to be notified when I post next. Now, let's talk all about free hacks for Squarespace 7.1. Today I'm in Tulum and the question comes from Barbara who asks, Phil, I know you're using Squarespace 7.1 now, any tips? Barbara, thank you so much for this question. In fact, I have a lot of tips after working on 7.1 for several months. I've been building every new client website on Squarespace 7.1 and for nearly eight months and 317 hours to be exact, my team and I, we have finished our new website with over 50 client examples. I will link to that in the description below if you wanna check it out. I'm a huge fan of Squarespace, but I think there are opportunities to make Squarespace even better. We're calling those opportunities hacks today, and they are free. I'm sharing a few resources that you're going to love. These are my go-tos, and I think you're gonna love them. Let's start with the first one. Squarespace hack number one. Free plugins. Yes, these exist. Of course, there are many premium or paid plugins online offered by third party vendors, companies other than Squarespace, who sell you a piece of code with a set of instructions on how to copy and paste them into your website. These instructions will normally indicate which settings you can change, color, speed, etc. It depends on what the plugin actually does. Now let me show you a few from my favorite resource, one of my favorites, where you can get free and paid plugins. This is called Ghost Plugins. This resource is a haven for any Squarespace designer like me, and it's just as useful for DIYers too. Take a look at the top where you can filter plugins by price. In this case, I'll click free. Their paid plugins are called super plugins, and you can check those out on your own. You wouldn't believe the selection of amazing plugins that are free, that you can copy code into the areas instructed on your website, your Squarespace website, and you are off to the races. Navigation buttons, photos, effects, the possibilities are endless. I want to draw your attention to the first search tab, Squarespace 7.1 compatible. Select this if you are building your site on 7.1. Now, a quick example, I added this brilliant hyperlink animation on a client website where a simple hover will animate it with an indent to the right. Subtle, but just enough to surprise users in a positive way. That animation is free and it's from Ghost Plugins, amazing library of free plugins. I've linked to that effect and to their library below, definitely so you can check it out for yourself. Squarespace hack number two, free tutorials. Now we talked a little bit about plugins and now I'm gonna talk about tutorials, similar to plugins, but these veer more on the side of education, teaching you the basics of CSS mostly. Sometimes JavaScript, but that's a whole other complicated world. With CSS, even a basic knowledge of this programming language, you can adjust the style of your site. CSS stands for cascading style sheets, which are used to describe the appearance of a markup language like HTML. And if you're trying to adjust how things look beyond a built-in Squarespace setting, CSS is your best friend. I should mention before you get carried away, Squarespace will not provide support related to things that are custom coded. You can ask them, but before they go into detail on how they might be able to help you, they'll hop over to this area of your website. From home, you'll click design, scroll down and select custom CSS, and there it is. If you've got a lot of code there, they're gonna remind you that Squarespace support doesn't apply to custom code just an FYI. Now that that is out of the way, I have a favorite go-to person for Squarespace tutorials that are free and you need to know about her. Her name is Becca and her brand is called Inside the Square and she is like the top dog when it comes to tutorials. Becca, you're amazing. It feels like you have a well thought out tutorial 
blog posts, and YouTube videos, I might add, a well thought out tutorial for almost everything. I've used more of your CSS tutorials than I can count, and I'm incredibly grateful for you. That's why you're getting love in this video. I'm gonna link to Becca's channel down below, as well as her blog, and I'm gonna show you an example of one of her great and free tutorials. On Squarespace, it is not possible to do a split layout unless you code it. The closest thing would be using an image card, but even then, that's not the desired outcome. Here, I'll show you. This is a split layout where you can see copy on a background and an image on the other side together, spanning the full width. Becca writes some code here so that you can left and right justify it, and you'll see here that I am doing both on one of my course landing pages. Her code will also stack it on smaller screens like mobile, which is brilliant. A huge thanks to Becca for her amazing tutorials, including this one. I've certainly become more comfortable with CSS thanks to you, so I appreciate it. We've talked about free plugins from great places like Ghost Plugins, and we've also talked about free tutorials from awesome creators like Becca from Inside the Square. Finally, I want to draw your attention to one more free hack. Squarespace hack number three, free built-in features. Now, before you yawn or click on to another video, just hear me out. Particularly with the rollout of Squarespace 7.1, this platform is packed with great features hiding right inside of it. Now, in this video, I'm not gonna go into detail on 7.1 itself. I do that in another video, which I'll link to somewhere over here. An honest review of 7.1, if you're thinking about using it for your new website, I weigh in on the pros and the cons. I'm gonna round off this video with some of the great features built right into Squarespace 7.1, starting with the new portfolio page. Before I dive in and show you what makes this so great on 7.1, let me show you the horrendous situation I had over on 7.0 before I made the switch. You, like me, might be a service provider that hosts a portfolio on their website with examples showing people what you're capable of doing. I had each client set up as indexes and pages hosted under indexes. Seems like a fine idea until I had over 50 client examples, five pages for every client, plus everything else, meaning I had well over 400 pages on this site with tons of visuals and it really weighed down the load time of my website. It was clunky and it was not great. However, on 7.1, I used their new portfolio page type. I was able to group these clients by category and have a fully customizable portfolio page for that category, plus this great overlay hover effect that changes the image enticing the user to click. My site runs much faster and the back end is so much easier to navigate now. I absolutely love it. So that's one feature that is new and at no additional cost to you beyond your Squarespace subscription fee. Another carried over from 7.1, the ability to duplicate a page. This comes in handy and you might wanna plan your content creation ahead of time to keep your life simple. I recently had to set up landing pages for each of my freebies, all 16 of them, but instead of creating each page individually, I completely finished one, including a little bio at the bottom, and duplicated it by going to settings and duplicate page as an option. This moves over everything and I just need to customize the text in the URL easy. Note that you can't duplicate things like portfolios or blogs, but it's rare that you would actually want to duplicate those things. You're probably most likely after a page to duplicate, and that's just that easy. Finally, one other underrated feature built directly into Squarespace is enhanced SEO customization, search engine optimization. Check this out. I'm going to show you the SEO settings here on my home page. Go to settings, SEO, and look at all of these great things that I can customize. Click edit website SEO. This will take you to a dedicated section in your settings, including an SEO checklist. Everyone publishing a website should work through this checklist. It's thorough and it's helpful and it's awesome. Back on this panel where you can have complete control over your home, pages and items like blog posts and products, you have complete control over how these look in a search engine. So get to work customizing and plugging lots of relevant keywords into what you're creating. Never assume that WordPress has more, quote, SEO than Squarespace. You have everything you need here paired with the right strategy. That's really what you need. Squarespace gives you this platform and tools to be found all without paying any more than your standard subscription. So there you have it, my three free Squarespace 
hacks. Now I want to hear from you. Did you learn something new today? What was it? Any lingering questions, thoughts, ideas to contribute? Comment below. I keep an eye and respond personally on those comments. If you found this video helpful, I would totally appreciate a like and consider subscribing for more of my videos here on YouTube where I discuss Squarespace, branding, social media, practical advice to look good online. Next, I'm linking you through to some videos that I think you're going to find helpful, including my honest review of 7.1. Should you make the switch, I'll tell you what to consider. I'm Phil Palin. Thanks for watching. Those videos, they're coming up next.